So the fall. The fall is, oh, it's, it's a leap of faith. We all know that, right? But it's actually no man's land. It's where we've completed one cycle in our life and we're getting ready to go into something new. I always see the fool as the curious optimist. So very much like the Knight of Wands energy. And um, the little story that I tell about here is she's a mermaid. You can see her kind of, her, her tail is kind of melting away and she's got two legs that are coming about. Now, she's lived in the sea her whole life. So just to give you an idea, when the fool comes up, it covers everything. The major arcana ones, they're about our um larger path in life and whatever you're about to step into like work relationships across the board it's big and it is based a lot on what you identify with as well what you believe in but we'll get to that in a moment so have a look at her. she's lived in the sea her whole life now when we experience this kind of an energy this is a lot of times when we will run it to readers we will run to a reading to try to get some kind of a guarantee or to get a peep ahead right like what's coming up but that is not the point the point of the full card is that it is something brand new. It's something that you've never experienced before. She's always been a mermaid happily in the sea or unhappily in the sea. We don't know. But she's always been in the sea. Now she's about to become a land dweller. She's going into this crazy new world that is dry and it's the land. She doesn't know what's coming up. She doesn't know who she'll meet. She has no idea. It's completely foreign concept to her. But look at her. She's eager and she's excited and she's ready to go forward and have this new experience. And the point of it is the new experience. And so as she steps forward, she doesn't, I mean, we say it's a leap of faith. What does that mean? It doesn't mean you have faith in what's coming up because you don't have a clue what's coming up. You have faith in yourself to know what to do with whatever you encounter to make the most of the experiences that are coming up for you. You know, a lot of people when they see the fool, it's a beautiful energy and they think, yeah, I'm ready for it. Okay, then jump. And they're like, wait, what? What do you mean? Because they think something's going to come up for them and then they will go. But there's no one on the shore that's calling to her. There's nothing there that she's going for. She has moved herself into a whole new cycle by taking that step into something new. Think about the fool that leaps off the cliff. That's oblivion. There's nothing there. There's no part of the journey that's shown. Everything is there. So, you know, a lot of times when we get to this kind of no man's land, we can't see ahead. We can pause here sometimes and think, well, okay, well, show me. What am I leaping into? That defeats the purpose a little bit, right, of the full energy. So it is kind of the unknown is very magnified when the full shows up. That's it. It's zero. It's in between. It's the between the beginning, between the end and the beginning. Now, the thing is, as much as that's why I was to look, I saw this as a rocket, like kind of just being shot out and just going forward with no kind of radar system, no kind of, it's not locked onto anything, it's nothing, it's just gone. You've got the chariot with this. Now the chariot is about balancing your head and your heart as you go forward. This is self-control. This is routine. This is, a, what, what are you changing about yourself? I always see that. You know, when people talk about, because the card that comes before the chariot is the lovers. So it's what we love. And so the chariot is how do we go for what we love? By balancing everything, but when people want to talk about diets or, you know, exercise, um, exercise programs that they're starting or, you know, work schedules, all of that, I see the chariot in that. I always see the chariot in that. It's the things that we need to do to move forward on our journey. Yes, it can be a literal journey. This could be a road trip. This could be traveling somewhere. It can be that. But into the unknown, that's pretty interesting. That would be like sticking a backpack on your back and just walking out the house. No idea where you're going. But think of that internally. Think of that energetically. How are you doing that? And what area of your life are you doing that? It's less about what's going on around you and more about the energy that you bring to it. It's a very controlled, very determined, very disciplined, very, I'm going to give this everything that I've got to move forward with the chariot coming up. So I like that. It's time for a shift. It's time for a change. Now I say that. Look at what's at the heart of your reading. The hanged man. He's not going anywhere. But what keeps him trapped? Some of you might feel like you're this. You know, I have, those of you that are feeling this, you might have already clicked off. Those people have already gone because they're looking at this thinking, yeah, not mine this month and gone off. Because when you're like this, you can't see any, you, can, you can't see a new beginning. You can't see how you can move in this. But what is the hanged man? The hanged man is the energy of what you believe. It's your philosophy. It's your perspective on stuff. Now, that's very important because what you believe, 
what you identify with, that is the action that you take. And think about the card that comes before this. We have number 11, the justice card that comes before the hangman. That's what that's that's your card, Libra, right? Where you've balanced yourself. There's, you know, the scales have been balanced. You kind of know what's going on. You've seen it from all sides. But are you trying to be fair? Well, there's something about a perspective, change in perspective. Let's flip it on its head. Let's look at it a different way with the hangman. Why do we do that? Because when you flip it on its head, you're going to see it from every angle. He's literally flipped on his head, right? And then when he figures out what he's trying to look for, when he has that kind of aha moment, epiphany, that's when he can get down. That's when everything transforms, right? Number 13, the death card is after the hangman. And when everything transforms, it's like we let go of those things that don't serve us. They don't mean anything to us. And I always think that's just my own thing that I come up with that the hanged man, he leaves something of his identity up there. That's why he's able to race ahead with the chariot now. Because something was holding him back in a way. And it comes from his belief system. So what does that mean? It means you may have always done certain jobs in the past. You might have hated them. I'm thinking of, I don't know, like say you worked in a corporate job. It paid really well. But, but your identity was around, well, yeah, you know, you do a nine to five, you have the house, you have the job, you have the cute outfits, you have the, that's what you identify with. But if your belief system changes, it's flipped on its head and it's like, well, that doesn't mean shit to me. I would rather be able to, like, you might become a parent or you might, you know, have other needs in your life that you want to spend more time with people. So it's like, that. I don't want to do nine to five anymore. I'd like to work for myself. I'd like to have control, autonomy over what I do. Like now that matters to you. So that's your switch in your perspective. Now think about it. You know, if you've started to believe something new, you see yourself in a different way. Your ego um, identifies with something new. You're not going to want to be up here anymore. You're going to be like, oh, okay, cool. Well, then I need to leave that nine to five. I need to go do something else. Or if you've always, your identity's always been through your relationships. Some of you might say, well, no, you know, I think I might throw myself in because try something new myself. Let me go and explore who I am. Let me go find out who I am. Let me go. Some of you might be going backpacking or traveling to go figure out who you are. This might, you know, when we get the hangman, especially looking at the rest of this, I'm getting an energy of you don't know what to do. You don't know where to go. You don't know if your situation is right for you or not right for you. Do I want out of this or in like, what is going on here? That's the hangman. It's limbo. It's absolute limbo. But sometimes to get the answers you know, we have to make the move first. And I think that's what the fool's saying to you. You make the move first. You don't know if you want to date or not. Well, cool, let's go out on a few dates and see if that sticks. What do I enjoy about it or not? That's how you'll figure out the answer. Or oh, I don't know if I enjoy this work or not. Well, let me try switching up a few things. Let me take a break, maybe a vacation, see how I feel with time away from it. So it, it's, I, that's how I think it is. I don't think staying still and trying to think about it before you make the move is going to help. Now that's actually good news for you, Libra, because you don't have to have to make a decision. You can just throw yourself into the first thing. <laughs> I know that takes a level of bravery and courage, but I think you're trying to figure out what your heart truly wants. What does my heart truly want right now? And some of you might turn around and say, well, Jay, I already know. I already know that this is my dream and this is my heart's desire. Then it's about how you've been approaching it. Then it's about how you've been approaching it. Or how you've been, how you see it in a certain way and you've been waiting for it to show up in that, with that look or that wrapping paper, whatever, you, however you see that gift. And it isn't about that. Then it's about going to explore it. Maybe it isn't coming in where you think it's coming in from. Because it's very stuck energy. And it feels like anywhere but here. That's what I'm getting from this. Anywhere but here. Let's just go anywhere but here. Let's just try anything new. Now you've got the six of cups as a past energy, the foundation. And interesting was the Six of Cups is the past. It's nostalgia. Um, it's having made our peace with the past. It's rose-tinted glasses. This can be childhood friends, childhood memories. This is even where we feel like we've met people who we feel like we've known forever. You know, we think, well, oh my God, I've been with this person in past lives. That's why it is that. But it's before the loss of innocence. That's what the Six of Cups represents. A time before the loss of innocence. So there may be some kind of inspiration that comes from there. Like before you got stuck in the trappings of, well, this is who I am and this is what I identify with and this is what I believe. There was a time when you just played, when you had very innocent dreams, where you just wanted to be a fairy or a princess or a fireman or whatever it is, right? Because it was fun. Now I know we grow up and 
there's a time for those kind of childish dreams, right? And there's a time to be an adult. But it doesn't mean we can't have inspiration from that time. It doesn't mean that we can't play from that kind of a time. So with the, sorry about that. So with the Six of Cups coming up as a past, this also tells me it's, it's looking back at a time when things were much easier. Before trauma happened, before there was loss, before any of that. Who were you before that? Who were you before that? This can be an old dream that resurfaces. And, you know, I say that, look at where it leads. So the Six of Cups, making peace with your past. That's a big deal. This is not about recriminations. This is not about so-and-so did whatever to me. It's none of that. It's like it happened. You know, you've made your peace with it. it. And when the Six of Cups comes up, especially when someone's been through something very traumatic, it means they've made their peace with it. I'm not saying that you have, you know, forever remain, you 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 know, you've gone back, you've reverted. No, we get we change. We We don't remain unchanged. We are always changed. But it's that level of peace and innocence that comes in. And have a look at this. Where does that lead? It leads you to the Nine of Cups. There is some clue from your past before you became jaded and cynical. And we all do, right? The more we go through hurt and pain, the more that happens. That holds the secret to what you desire now. And some of you might have written it off as a fairy tale or, you know, yeah, that's when I was a kid or whatever. But it isn't. There's a level of innocence that's coming in. I mean, the fool is innocent. That's why the fool is called that. It's very simple soul. Very trusting. Look at her. Look at her. She's just awestruck. She's going towards something brand new. And that's how children are like, right? right? They can be afraid, but they're also like, oh my God, what's this? Who's this? You know, when they meet new people, that it's that level of innocence. That's what seems to be coming back for you in July, Libra. And it allows you to explore what you truly wish for. What you Because for some of you, I'm going to say this, the way that you have seen previous wishes and desires and things that you have wanted, they have kept you trapped. Like it can only come in looking like this relationship or this person or this job or that home or in this kind. Like, you know, we all do that. It's not just you, Libra. We all do that. We get stuck. That's our human aspect because we can only see it in one certain way because it's based on our experiences. In our experience, you know, when I was with bloody whoever, that's when I was the happiest. So I want that again. But maybe you can get that emotional happiness from something else. And that's how we ultimately manifest by feeling what we want to feel from that personal situation right now. And so in, for some of you, old dreams or the way that you have seen it has kept you trapped. Think about the fool. The fool does not have a map. Every map that she has known, so everything that she's known, she throws it away. It doesn't serve her. She's going into the unknown. So why would it serve her, right? Why would it serve her? So now dream big, wish big. Um, I would also recommend for some of you, and I don't know where it's coming from, but to play, to play. Like Even if you get like some Legos out or, you know, um, a puzzle or something like how children used to play. Because there is this kind of need to be innocent once again. To have that kind of inspiration come up in you, that level of innocence. Because that's what, how you tap into your heart space. Now, going forward, you bet your butt you're going to know what the hell you want to do. Five of Wands is this is it. This is action. This is action. And especially with that chariot. I The chariot is the card for cancers. It can be cancer season. But it kind of feels like you don't know where to apply the action right now. What do I do? How do I go forward? This is where you know. Look at them all lined up. It always looks like a team, right? This is competition. This is getting back in the ring, getting back on the horse, whatever you want to call it. This is where you show up and show what you're made of. Now, fives are the agents of chaos. But I'm getting very strongly that July is where, you know, we could, it's not working harder. Like some of you might have been, you might be trying to force things to happen, create change. And you know, this is where people show up and they say to me, Jay, I've tried everything. I've done everything in my power. Okay, cool. But what have you been putting effort into? Have you been spreading yourself too thin? Have you been just trying everything? Let me just see what sticks. Because here we get very specific. This is where, this is my wish. This is my dream. For some of you, that's actually coming in. A dream that you wished a long time ago. But even with that, it's a level of uncertainty. You're not going to have the answers. If you're looking for answers, there are none here. Because that is the whole point of this. Can you go on faith? Not waiting there to see like, you know, is what I want going to come in? No. Can I go on faith and can I just throw, understand this is what pure, my pure heart space is. 
I want to feel happy. I want to feel joyous. I don't want this stress. I don't, you know, whatever it is that you want to feel. We all want something that we feel will complete us. Connect to that. You'll know what to do. You'll know what to do. The other thing I'm going to say to you, look at your advice, Libra. You got the four of cups, my lovelies. And the four of cups, straight up, I'm going to say to you, please stop considering options that mean absolutely nothing to you. Stop selling yourself short. Please stop selling yourself short. And I mean that. I'm being very serious around this because you're just stuck here for whatever reason. Each of you has your own reason that this resonates with. I know it's not going to be for everyone, but whatever you're feeling stuck with, it's because you, you're you considering certain options. Now, he has three cups that they're known. You know, he has them. He has them in front of him. Do they make him happy? No. So some of you are, you know, there's an existing relationship, person, job, whatever, and you're doing the hangman to it. You're like flipping it up and down and trying to make yourself like it in some way. So you don't have to take a risk because the fool's a risk going to something new. How do I make this work? I've known this for so long. How do I do this? And it's like, let's just face it. It bores you stupid. And look at him. He's taken to drinking and he's not even drinking out of the cups. Like They're so useless to him that he's drinking straight out the bottle. That's a very profound statement here because what he wants is the ace of cups. Maybe that's what you always wanted, but you might have given up on it with everything that's happened. So you're trying to make that square peg fit in a round hole right now, right? You're trying to make it go in. It doesn't work. This is boredom. This is apathy. Some of you, I'll just say it, been drinking too much to kind of numb the pain. It doesn't have to be drinking, shopping too much, eating too much, you know, whatever it is. This is where we get stuck in that kind of thing to kind of ease the pain. Because the, what we have isn't doing it for us. But why settle for something that doesn't do anything for you? So that's your big advice. Dream big. Go big. Like just throw, It's about the wish, the dream. And some of you have always known what you've wanted. But you've, like I said, you've seen it in a very specific way. It has to be that person or I don't want it. Well, guess what happens? If that person is not vibrating at the same level as you, you won't get them until they do. And you can't change that about them. All you can do is be true to yourself. Take action where you can. It's not about sitting around waiting, like, where's it going to come from? Because there is a cup coming in, a new beginning, emotional one. Okay, right. Two fives, that's intense. I always see the fives as the agents of chaos. Now, they're fives, so there's four fives. I don't include the Hierophant in that. If you include, you know, um, the five of cups. Then you guys get the five of cups. The five of cups, the five of pentacles, the five of swords, and the five of wands, right? They are up to 20. Judgment is number 20. So the whole point of it, I feel like it's an old dream coming back, guys. Judgment is a second chance at this, but we're going to do it completely differently. We're not going to do it the way that we have. I would not be surprised if at the beginning of July, if you listened to this and you're like, Jay, I, I don't know. I just don't. I can't see it any other way. You will. You will with the hangman there. You will. Trust me on this. Please make your peace with what has happened. I'm not saying that you have to give up on it. It's not about that. It's shifting your focus. I've been saying this to a lot of people. So many people, they've, we've done it. That's what the last few years have been like for us. Looking back at the trauma of what has been, looking back at what we've gone through, making our peace with the trauma, healing it. But, you know, and the way that I put it is it's the university, right? None of us wanted to go to that university of trauma management or trauma recovery or shadow work, but we did it. Now we are at the end of that. We're ready to graduate from that university. We've done the shadow work. I mean, we'll always have shadow work to do, but we've learned how to do it. It's now become a practice for us. We don't have to go to class all the time and learn, go through it one bit at a time. We know we can, we do it through every breath, the way that we live. It's become part of our knowledge and our experience. And yet, guess what? That very university that you didn't even want to join in the first place, now it's become your new safe space. Now it's like, well, what? Well, what does that mean? I have to actually go out and use this stuff or implement it or go and get a job? Yes, it does. Yes, it means that. It means we are we are ready to graduate. And judgment, it is dark night of the soul. It is dark night of the soul. But I kind of feel, and I've been saying this more and more, that, um, and you're going to hear me talk about it more because I feel like that's a new phase, especially where I am in my journey and how I've seen it, is that it's not about sitting up camp in the shadows anymore. And that's what a lot of us have done. But we've become too comfortable there. It's time to look away from, you know, make the peace with what has happened. You know, the wise. 
oh, I've had this trauma or that person's had that. We've all been doing it, coming forward with our sad little stories of what happened to us. And we all have them. And there was a time for that. But OK, so you've done that. Where are we going with that now? Everything else happens on the fly now. You'll still keep healing, but it's going to become it's so natural now because you've done so much of it. And judgment is drawing a line under the past and moving forward. Whatever you've been through, you now have the knowledge to go try this out. But you try, it's about trusting that, not getting stuck in limbo. Look, focusing on what your heart wants. Let's focus on some positive stuff. Let's focus on what we want to create, not why we're stuck in the shadows. None of that. Because judgment is that. It's being reborn as someone new. And so a lot of you are stuck in limbo because you're still trying to do things the old way. And that's not you anymore. You're ready for a new journey. You've learned some new stuff about yourself. You're not actually um, a product of that past anymore. It's time to re be reborn. And all of these people get a second chance at life, but they have to, they let go of the old life. The, the fool says that as well. And how do we step forward? Like imagine you were reborn like these people, right? You see them kind of coming out of their little bubbles. What's the first thing that you do? What's the first thing that a kid does? It cries, right? Because it wants, it wants milk or it wants to be fed or it wants something and it's your want. And so as you're reborn as this new person, what is it that you truly want? What are you crying out for? What is your new baby you? What does it want? That very innocent heart's desire. What does it want? It's about forgetting everything that went before that. So you've made your peace with it, trust me. And so that's why the advice here, very simply, do not consider this crap that's coming in or even wait for someone to give you their cup because you're the knight of cups here. And the knight of cups looks into his own cup. He looks at how he wants to feel. He's the dreamer. He's the delusional romantic. He doesn't have anything practical. It's all about what do I want? How do I want to feel? Which dream can I pursue? That is the focus here. That is the focus here. I've had people repeat this to me this past week. A lot of people that they, I know what you're going to say, Jay. And I'm like, yeah, what am I going to say? You're going to say you never argue with people. Whatever they tell you their story is, that is their truth. And that is the truth. So imagine if you were truly from the heart able to tell a story of this is my dream. This is my wish. This is what I want to explore. You know, I want to I want to go and explore these feelings. The curious optimist of the fool. You're not going to consider bullshit that's in front of you. That what's what's dreamy and wonderful about that? Nothing. And yes, for some of you, it is an old dream that comes back. But remember, judgment is, is reborn. It is not the same. It may be a second shot at something, but if you do it the same way, it's going to end up the same way. This is about brand new life. You are reborn as someone new. It's that resurrection of you. Now you've got two fives in the future, agents of chaos, right? And they have elements of this. This one we've talked about, the action that you take, doing things differently. And fives are agents of chaos because they feel very intense and very difficult. And that's the whole point of them. They come up like that. And so we don't like the situation. We're going to change it. This is the action that you take. Now, with the five of pentacles, I think some of you have to own up to this, that with the hanged man coming up here, the only reason you've been stuck here is because either you don't feel like you have enough to give to the new dream or there's a fear of rejection. What if it doesn't work out? You're waiting to see if it will work out before you actually do it. Well, that doesn't work with the fool. 